What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you how I made this render. As you can see it's an abstract sort of tunnel VJ loop. Uh, it's quite simple to make, just follow the tutorial step by step and you'll get something that looks similar, if not even better. And I think you're going to learn a lot from this as well. Uh, this one was actually requested uh, by some of my followers on my Instagram account, so feel free to check that out. And if you see something on there that you like and you want to know how I made it, uh, I encourage you guys just to comment and just let me know that you want to see the tutorial. I'll leave my handle down below so you can uh, search that up and follow me. Uh, but yeah, on with the tutorial. Alright, so once you've got Blender open, we're going to just delete the default cube. So hit X, hit Delete, now hit Shift A, add a mesh and we're going to add a plane. Scale it up to 8, so hit S and then 8. Now come into Edit Mode, so hit Tab. Now come up here to Edge and we're going to subdivide it. So select Subdivide and you want to come to this menu down here open that up and we're going to change the number of cuts to 30 now come to edge and hit edge split so come out of edit mode hit tab if you come to your modifier section add a new modifier and we're going to add a smooth modifier and now you can see the effect and you can play around with a factor for different sizes but we're going to leave it as it was so just leave it at 0.5 for now now we're going to add a solidified modifier so come up here add modifier add solidify and that's essentially going to extrude each one of these squares making it more of a cube and you can play around with the thickness but we're going to drop it down to about we'll say about 0.3 now you notice on my render there was a lot of movement on this we're going to achieve this by adding a wave modifier so add a modifier come here to wave scroll down now with the wave modifier it essentially does all the animation for you so all you got to do is hit play so just hit spacebar and it's going to do this for you. You haven't got to do any keyframing for this sort of displacement on these squares. So it's quite a handy tool if you just want to get something cool quickly. But um, you can have trouble looping it though, that's the only problem. So if you see, if you come to the end of your frame here uh, on 251, if you want it to loop, the positions of the, uh, of the wave needs to be exactly the same um, on the last frame as the first frame. Uh, otherwise it's not going to loop properly and that's the only problem with the wave modifier um, so you have to kind of time it correctly and play around with the parameters but what I've noticed is this wave modifier it seems to um, perform at 24 frames per second so all you have to do is make sure your animation ends um, within multiples of that if it makes sense so if you want a 5 second clip just hit 120 on the end position and you should get a perfect loop with the wave modifier, providing you haven't changed the speed parameters or anything like that. But if you look here, on frame 1 to 1, if you skip to the first frame, you see no movement on your mesh. And that's what you want if you want it to loop. So we're going to play around with a few of these parameters just to tame it a bit. So I'm going to bring the... So leave all these ticked. I'm going to go down here. And I'm just going to change the height of the wave. I'm going to bring it down to the negatives. Say about there. And you can do this to your taste. If you want it a bit more strong, that's fine. I'm going to set the height to negative 0.15. I think that's good. Next step, we're going to add a mirror modifier to this. We want it to mirror along the x-axis so we can make a wider sort of... Uh, wave plane if that makes sense so hit shift a and we're going to add an empty and we're going to add an empty plane axis uh, now if you hit g x then eight that's going to put your axis right at the end of the plane now come to your plane and we're going to add another modifier now we're going to add a mirror modifier so click on that scroll down and make sure x is checked i'm just going to rename this empty quickly empty X so back to your mirror modifier on mirror object select the empty you just created and there you go now we have an identical match of the plane now I'm gonna select the plane hit control select the empty and we're gonna hit G then X and then minus 8 so it's directly in the center now click on your camera hit alt G Alt-R, then Rx90, and GY-8, and if you go to top view, you're going to see that puts your camera 
precisely where the plane starts. And to make this a seamless loop, we're going to keyframe the camera essentially moving along the y-axis to the end and then it will come back again. And so you want this to be mathematically correct when doing this. So click on your camera, on your transform settings, come to your location on the y, add a keyframe on your first frame and on frame 1 to 1, change that to 8 and apply a keyframe. Now hit A then T and you want to set your interpolation to linear. Uh, this is so that you get a constant um, movement in the animation. It's uh, your default set to Bezier and if you leave it as that um, when it comes to the end of animation it's going to sort of ease into the end and it's going to slow down and it just won't look as good. Uh, so yeah make sure that's set to linear. Now if you hit play you'll see the camera comes all the way to the end of the y-axis and then back again. And if you hit zero that toggles camera mode you can see that Now, we're going to make this really long. So rather than duplicating each one, uh, we're going to instance it. This just uh, saves your computer from struggling a bit. And also, it's good because any changes that you make to the original object, it will affect everything else. Uh, so it's quite handy in that sense as well. Uh, so yeah, the way we instance it is just click on your plane, hit M, add a new collection, and we'll just call it Waves. Now hit Shift A, now hit Shift A, add a collection instance, and we'll add waves. Now follow my keyboard inputs. I'm going to hit G, Y, 16, and if you come to top view, you'll see that new plane ends exactly where the other one does. And now that you've made that instance, you can just duplicate the instance. Uh, so you just hit Shift D, then Y, 16, and just repeat that process about seven times. Now hit zero, and now play. and you'll see you get an infinite loop. Now I'm just gonna play around with my camera position. So, so remember, zero toggles camera mode. If you click on your camera, and then hit G, and then Z, you can bring it up by the Z axis, and just find a position that you like. Um, I'll say there for now, but we'll probably play around with it later. And then if you come to your camera settings, you can just pull the shift down if you wanna angle it in different ways. Now back to that plane, I'm going to add a wireframe modifier. So add a modifier, add wireframe. We can just drop the thickness down to about 0 0.003. And you get this. And that looks cool, but for this tutorial, we're going to uncheck replace original. And what that does is it essentially adds the wireframe over the mesh uh, rather than replacing it. So it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Now I'm just going to jump into rendered mode and I'm going to do a bit of shading on these things. So hit Z and then 8. It's going to take you into rendered mode. The first thing I'm going to do is make the world black. So come to your world settings, color, black, bring that down to the black. Come down here, click on your plane. Now this is the master plane. So as I said earlier, because we've instanced everything, everything we do to this plane is going to affect all the instances. So we are going to add a material, come to your material settings of your plane, this bit here, add a new material, leave it as the principled shader, pump the metallic up and drop the roughness all the way down. So it's a completely reflective material. Now we're going to add another shader, so add a new material, add new, and this time it's going to be an emission shader. So on the surface, click on this, and come to emission. Now you're not going to see any effect because material one is our base material. So we're going to assign this emission material to just the wireframes. And I'll show you how we do that. So if you come to your modifier section, this little spanner. Now you remember we created the wireframes earlier. Uh, just under that box we unchecked earlier, uh, you see where it says material? We're going to assign this to material one. And now you're going to see the emission shader is affecting just the wireframes. And because we're using the emission shaders to light up the scene, I'm going to delete this point lamp because we don't need it. So just click on that light over here, hit X, delete. Pick a color that you like, but for this tutorial, 
I'm going to go with a deep blue. We'll say that, and I'm going to pump it up to eight. Yeah. Now that's looking cool. So I am going to go back into my viewport. So hit Z, then six, and I'm going to make a tunnel out of this now. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to hit Shift A, add a new mesh, and we're going to add a cylinder. Now we're going to hit RX90, and we're going to hit SY8. Now come into edit mode, so hit tab, come to your face selection here, and click on this one, this face, hit X, delete faces, now come around to the other side, do the same again for this, delete faces, so that you have come out of edit mode, we're going to hit control A, and we're going to apply rotation, Control A and apply scale. Now come to your transform settings of your cylinder and we're going to change the scale on the x axis. Just pump it all the way up to about here, just so you're not clipping on the sides. And on the z axis, pump that up. We'll say about there. And we're going to bring it down a bit. So G, Z, bring that down. Now we're going to hit Shift D, Enter, and on your first cylinder, we're going to call this Tunnel Wire, and on this other one, we're going to call that Tunnel Reflect. So we have two tunnels. Um, one is going to be a wireframe with emission shaders, kind of like our squares, and then we're going to have one just around it called Tunnel Reflect, and that's essentially just going to be behind it so it reflects the light of what's coming out of the wireframe uh, and it's just going to give it a bit more depth in the scene and it's going to look cool. So on your tunnel reflect, click on that and just scale it by the X a bit further out and by the Z a bit further out too. Just don't touch the Y. You want the Y to be mathematically correct because you want if you look at the top view, you want it on the Y axis, this green one, you want it to end precisely there so we can instance this as well. Now on your tunnel reflect, just hide that quickly. We're going to click on tunnel wire, go to top view, so hit the tilde key, then eight, come into edit mode, so hit tab, and we're just going to do a few loop cuts. So click on this bit here, loop cut. We're going to add one in the middle, one here, and one here. Now come out of edit mode, now when we add a wireframe, hit add modifier, add a wireframe, and you're going to get this cool sort of grid effect now. And we're going to drop the thickness down to about 0 0.004. Now, unhide your tunnel reflect. So you can kind of see what I mean now. So you've got the tunnel wire on the inside, and this little bit we're going to use to reflect the light coming off of it. Jump back into rendered mode, so hit Z then 8. And on your tunnel reflect, we're going to add a material, so add a new one, and we're going to pump the metallic up, and we're going to drop the roughness down. Come to your render properties here, tick this, ambient inclusion, bloom, screen space reflections, that's important if you want it to reflect light, and now you can see what it's doing. So it's reflecting the light that's coming out of these shaders, and we're going to add motion blur as well, because why the hell not? Cool. That's looking good. Now on your tunnel wire, we're going to shade this as well. So add a new material. This is your base material, so we're going to pump the metallic on that and leave the roughness where it is. And we'll drop this down as well. And we're going to do a similar thing uh, to what we did with these cubes. So we're going to add another material and add a new one. And we're going to add an emission shader. So surface, emission. Now we're going to apply this emission shader to some random wireframes. Now to do that, you need to jump into edit mode. But as you can see, when we jump into edit mode, we lose our wireframes. And the reason that is, is because we haven't applied a wireframe modifier. So if you come to your modifier section, on your tunnel wire, just make sure that's applied. Now once you've applied it, you can't make any more changes to it. So 
Make sure you're happy with uh, the thickness of your wireframe before you hit apply. Now when you come into edit mode, you can see you've got the wireframes now. Before I do any of that, I want to instance these because obviously it needs to follow along the path. So just click on your tunnel wire and your tunnel reflect and just drag and drop that to where your planes are, this little folder here. And now that's going to instance everything for you. So now when you jump into the camera mode, whew, look at that. So if you click on your tunnel wire now, jump into edit mode, make sure you're selecting faces. So click on this and make sure you, you click on this as well. Just select any face on this wireframe. So just click on any one of these, come to select and hit select random. And we're going to drop the percentage down to about around 20% mark. And you can play around with the random seed as well. That's just, uh, that basically gives you a, so that's the percentage of selections and this is just the pattern. So if you want to mix it up a bit and find something that you like, then come to your shader, come to this material, the one with the emission on it. And we're going to hit assign. Now, if you come out of edit mode and we're going to take the overlays off as well, you're going to see it's assigned emission shaders to those um, to those faces that we just selected. Uh, it's a bit subtle because there's not much going on. So we're going to change the color to a nice orange so you can see that more and pop the strength to 8. Now we're going to do it again but with a different color. So jump back into edit mode, turn your overlays on, click on one of the faces, same again, select, select random and just play with the seed till you get something that you like and we're going to add a new material, add new, uh, change that to a mission, and hit assign. Same again, pump that up to 8. Come out of edit mode. Now, I'm going to make this color the same as the emission coming from my plane. So click on your plane, come to that color, come to the hex code here, grab that, copy it, click on tunnel wire, click on color, and just paste that hex code. There you go. Now you've got the same color. Now come out of edit mode. Now a few more things. I'm just going to come to the uh, scene settings. The bloom's really strong in Eevee, so I'm just going to bring the bloom intensity down. Pop it down to about there. And I'm going to come to color management. I'm going to change the look to very high contrast. And I'm going to drop the gamma down to about 0.7. I'm also going to go back to my plane. I think the wireframe's a bit too thick. So come to your modifier section of your plane, scroll down to your wireframe modifier and just drop that down a touch. Now I'm just going to come out of rendered mode because my computer is struggling a bit. So hit Z then 6 and we're just going to experiment with some of the animation. So now I'm going to animate the wireframe on here. So come to your first frame, come to the thickness of your wireframe for your plane and we're going to apply a keyframe, so hit I on the keyboard, apply a keyframe to frame 1, shift D, bring that to 1 to 1, and shift D, bring that to frame 20, 21, sorry, shift D, bring that to 101, and on frame 61, I'm going to bring the wireframe to 0, so that's going to create this sort of disintegration effect. That looks pretty cool. And I'm also going to play around with the smooth modifier. So if you scroll up here, we can play around with the fact. So we can do some interesting things with this, as you can see. So we're going to apply a keyframe here. And on frame 41, we're going to bring it we're going to bring it about here hit i shift d bring that to 81 and then shift d on the first frame just make sure that frame is exactly the same as what's 
Just make sure that frame is exactly the same as frame 1 to 1 if you want it to loop. And now you're going to get a cool sort of animation here. And you can still play around with your camera settings, remember? So if you click up, come up to your camera, you can uh, play around with the focal length if you want. If you drop the focal length down, you get a wider angle lens. Uh, it sort of gives you the illusion that you're moving faster. Uh, or if you want a sort of uh, more focused focal length, you can uh, bring that up. I'm going to put it to about 28. And there are some final things you can do as well. If you want to, on your tunnel reflect, just down to personal preference, you can change the base color of your reflection. If you don't want it as strong, you can just bring this down to more black. Uh, this sort of this can sort of tame the reflections a bit. Um, or if you want loads of reflections, just pump it all the way up. But I think a bit in the middle looks good, in my opinion. Right, that's pretty much it. So the only thing left to do now is to render the animation. So if you come to here, to your scene settings, um, just going to come out of render mode. On your output, just change that. Put it somewhere, save it somewhere you can find it. So I just got a Blender Render um, folder. File format, change that to FMPEG video. Encoding, you want that to be MP4. Video codec, levers H264. And change that to Perception Lossless for your output quality. And then you just want to come up here to render and render animation and you're done. And I'm just going to make some few final adjustments, so I'm actually not too happy with the camera position. So I'm going to come up to my camera, click on my camera, go to the location settings. I'm just going to bring it up on the Z a bit, so it's uh, more up here. And I'm going to come to the camera settings. I'm going to shift it down on the Y axis so it faces down a bit more. I think that's good. And then I'm going to drop the focal length to about 25. And then yeah, just uh, once you're done with that, just hit render and render animation. Right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, it's a really cool render. It looks really awesome and it loops seamlessly. And like I said, uh, this was requested uh, from my Instagram account. So if you do see anything on there that you like, don't be shy. Just leave a comment and I will show you how I made it. Only thing left for you guys to do is to hit that like button and subscribe as it really helps me grow the channel. And if you want to grab the project file or just the render, you can find that at nebmotion.co.uk.